choosing love. I have written here, life is about the choices you make. It isn't just about what happens to you or what people do to you. I'm sure you've heard that many times. Life is about the choices you make. I remember doing a message some time ago about happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice you make. If you're going to be happy in life, it's going to be a choice you're going to make. You're not going to say, well, if, if my spouse, you know, should do this, then I will be happy in life. It's a choice you make. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 and 20, today I've given you the choice between life and death. Can someone say, I have a choice between life and death? You see, the enemy will want you to believe you don't have a choice. You have a choice. You have a choice between life and death, between happiness and sadness, between joy and pain. You have a choice. I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. You know, sometimes, you know, we think about people cursing us. You know, I was listening to, to, to audio Bible, Old Testament, and somewhere in, the, in Proverbs, the Bible says, anyone... A man who repays evil with good, who repays good with evil, sorry, curses will not depart from that person. I say, whoa. It's not about somebody opening their mouth to curse you, forget that one. The Bible says, if somebody does good to you and you repay them with evil, curses wouldn't depart from such people. But thank God because we can go to God and repent. That's why we need to know how we treat people. People who have blessed you. People who have been good to you. How do you respond to them? It's in the book of Proverbs. That when you repay evil, good with evil, curse will not depart. So there are many ways through which we can attract curses to ourselves. The Bible says the curse causeless shall not alight. So I want to make sure we do the right thing. Can someone say amen? amen? It's like when the Bible says, whatever a man sows, he will reap it. And I was speaking to someone, and I said to her, I said, if somebody treated me well, and have been a blessing to me the way I have been to you, and I treated them the way you treated me, let God be the judge. Because the Bible, Jesus said, with the measure you use to judge others, it will be used to judge you. With what measure? I said, if someone has been a blessing to me, has been there for me, prayed for me, prayed with me, and someone did that for me, to me, and I treated them the way you have treated me, then let God be my judge. I choose. I, I put before you. And that's why, like my husband said, some of us need to always ask God for crop failures. We need to ask God. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. I want us to know that heaven and earth witness the choice we make. Oh, that we will choose life. So that you and your descendants might live. Glory to God. What does that mean? The choices you make will affect your descendants. That's why God will appear to Isaac. Will appear to Jacob. And say because of your father Abraham. No obedience is personal. And no disobedience is personal. The Bible says through the disobedience of one man, death passed to all. And through the obedience of one man. Glory to God. So when people stand and they talk about connection, don't say it's Africanism. It's not Africanism. It's the word of God. Salvation is of the Jews. Forget all this independent spirit, this individualism. We've said it over and over. There's something about, about the effort, the faith of other people, the prayers of other people that God can put into your account. He says, you have, Jesus said, I've sent you to reap where you didn't sow. So who sowed it? Why would the Bible say you should honor your father and your mother? So that it should go well with you. 
and you may live long. That's why I take very seriously the prayers of my mother when she prays for me. She never ceases to pray. If I call her now, she will start praying. If I put her on speaker for you, you will hear her. I mean, sometimes my husband is like, the long time we spoke, spoke to your mom, I always love to enjoy her prayer because she's always praying. My mom, bless her heart. You call her to say, Mom, my head, we're not feeling fine. Before you know it, she's praying. Praying and she will pray for my kids. Oh, Sam will not marry the wrong person. The girls will not marry. In fact, she will go on and on. The work you and your husband are doing, you know, you will do it to the end. You will run to the end. And she will always pray one prayer. You will not become prideful. You will not become big in your own eyes. That's one prayer I'm always praying. You and your husband, you will not become big. My, my son is laughing. They know their grandma. She starts. You will, I like that. She said you will not become. The Bible says that when Uzziah became prideful, when, when Saul became big in his own eyes. So when my mother prays that prayer, you will not become big in your own eyes. I remember Oral Robert. His mother used to tell him, God is great. You are not. Don't forget it. I don't mix it up. I cherish the prayer of my mother. And that's why I bless my mother. I bless her. I bless her. I tell you, there's something about spontaneous prayers. There's something about prayers that come out of the heart of people. You know, why, does the Bible, why does the Bible tell us in the book of Hebrews 13 that those who, who are leaders over us, that they will give account for our souls, that we should not let them do it with pain, but with joy. Don't bring pain to your leaders. I don't care what race you are. I don't care what culture you are. I don't care where you were born. I don't care. The word of God is the word of God. God said, I'm going to turn the heart of the fathers to the sons. The heart of the sons to the fathers. Lest I come and smite the land with a curse. I don't care what culture you are. You know, Absalom revolted against his father. And even though the father said, don't touch the young man Absalom. Guess what? As he was riding on his mule, his long hair got caught. Are you listening to me? Hand joined in hand, the wicked will not go unpunished. Oh, this is not why we came to church. You should be glad you came. Because I believe that the Spirit of God is saying something here. Because I didn't plan this in my message. Is somebody listening to me? And I'm going to flow with that. I don't care what the color of your skin is. Salvation is of the Jews. Moses said to the people of Israel, he said there's no nation under the earth that God went and, built and gave his own laws to. It's not about you're trying to make us like Africans. No, 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 no. Salvation is of the Jews. Not because they are Jews, but because God separated them. He called a man called Abraham. And through Abraham, he raised that race. And what makes them special? He gave them his laws. What's the meaning of his laws? For you to know how God wants things to be. And let me tell you something. In the New Testament, things have not changed. Have not changed. What has changed is our approach to God. The method. God, God became flesh, hallelujah, and he tabernacled among us. Praise the Lord. Sin is no less sin because you're under the New Testament. But thank God for the blood of Jesus. Instead of you carrying bulls and goats every time, killing all of this, there's one time sacrifice. And that's why every time you sin, you can just come to God boldly, confess your sins. And that blood that was shed how many years ago, even before the founding of the world, will come as though it was just being shed afresh. And the blood of just will cleanse you. Don't let anybody deceive you. Sin is still sin. The New Testament doesn't make sin less sin. The only thing is that you don't have to go and be killing anything. And guess what? There's, your Christ has become your high priest. He has appeared before God. Hallelujah. In those times, once in a year, the high priest will go into the Holy of Holies. But thank God the way has been made open. You and I can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy. And to find grace to help in time of need. Don't let anybody deceive you. Sin is still sin. And God made a provision for your sins to be forgiven. He said, if you confess your sins. If. If.